Ryan Bomberger grew up with 12 other siblings. Nine were adopted, including him. When Ryan was 13, he found out that his biological mother became pregnant with him after she was raped. The news left him devastated, but soon Ryan realized he had a story to tell. In his book, Not Equal, Ryan educates others on the horrors of the abortion industry and offers powerful proof that triumph can come from tragedy. Ryan Bomberger joins us now. Welcome to the show, first of all. But Ryan, I think it's, kids struggle with the whole adoption issue in general. Mm -hmm. Now your story is that you were conceived when your mom experienced a rape. Well, tell me what you went through. I mean, here you are just in your early teen years and you're trying to swallow that. I mean, how did you deal with that? It was crazy, but because I was loved like crazy by my parents, uh, it helped keep me stable. But when you find out at 13 that your earlier narrative was false, wasn't right, uh, it's, a little, uh, it's, a little, it's a little disconcerting, you could say. Yeah. But because I had parents who loved me and always encouraged me to express myself, mm -hmm. you know, in a family of 15, if you don't express yourself, you get lost You're in the mix. Heard. But um, <laughs> it was really a painful time because for so long I wondered, why didn't she want me? Why didn't she want me? Ah. And it transformed into, wow, she chose to be stronger than our circumstances. Yeah. She loved me enough wow. to give me the chance to love and to be loved. And so it was, it was a really difficult time, but God turned it into something really constructive and, and powerful years down the road. You know, Ryan, when we talk about abortion in our culture today, there are some scenarios that we leave as outs. You know, if, if the baby is severely damaged in some way, if the mother's life is threatened, if rape has occurred. Right. I mean, God has made something so amazingly beautiful out of your story. Oh, yeah, Well, handsome too. <laughs> yeah, no, that too. It <laughs> but in the black community... Um, Abortion is huge. How many kids a day? Well, there, in a year, 259,000, and that can equate to around 800, 850 a year. Some people round it up to 1,000. We don't actually have exact numbers because the, the federal government doesn't keep them. But among Planned Parenthood, the leading abortion uh, organization in the country, 247 each day. Wow. I mean, wow. that's, people talk about Black Lives Matter. Well, when do they matter? They should matter in and out of the womb. And why aren't we hearing that from civil rights leaders? Why have they drunk the Kool-Aid, so to speak? It's like everybody, the, the woman's right has taken such precedent in our culture that the, the child is now called blob of tissue. I mean, it's just like everything's gotten out of whack. Right, not a person. I mean, it's, it's even more ironic that civil rights organizations, particularly African-American-led organizations who have fought for people of my complexion to be considered human beings are now considering another group of human beings less than human. I mean, the irony of using the 14th Amendment to say, wait a minute, I'm sorry, women deserve the right to end the life. Actually, not even women, abortionists, mostly male, abortionists get to end the life of a, of, of a child because that individual is not human enough, is not a person. And so trying to fight that irony with, with my book, Not Equal, Civil Rights Gone Wrong, uh, is part of the mix, part of what we do through the Radiance Foundation. But it pains me to see once great civil rights organizations siding with an industry that kills the image of God. Your parents obviously had a different way of thinking, a different way of seeing the world, a different way of valuing life. I, I look at that and I think, how do, we, how do we translate that to people? How do, we, how do you, through the Radiance Foundation, your organization, find a way to share that truth? Every, every life matters. Yeah, in my that family. That doesn't diminish black lives matter. Not it means at all. every right. life matters. Every life matters. And growing up with two parents who firmly believe that, who believe that we're created in the image of God, we're, it, they believe that every, every child is precious and every child deserves to be loved. In my family, we have those with physical disabilities, those who came from horrific backgrounds, physical abuse or sexual abuse. But my parents understood that God's love transforms everything. It may not deliver us fully this side of heaven, mm -hmm. but it is transformative. And so when you grow up with parents who believe that and they infuse that into everything that they do, I can't help but share that same passion. You know, when in our family, we have five adopted children, two that are biologically born. But I remember when we found out that our last three came from a very violent, difficult background, my husband said, do you think that's a red light? And I said, I don't think so, because if not us, who? 
talk about adoption, the Christian community, God's plan, how he sees us. I mean, we need to get the message. Ephesians 1.5, I mean, God predestined us through adoption. He understood that this process was how we become members idea. of his family, yes. Yeah. And I love my, my wife, Bethany, my amazing wife, Bethany, and I have four kids. Two of them are adopted. And people don't understand there's such powerful biblical examples. How about the most important one, the one that literally changes the world and changes our lives? And we find in the genealogy, for instance, of Christ, it does not end with Mary, it ends with Joseph. So you're talking about a story of adoption there that literally transformed the world. And so we just try to encourage people to understand that adoption is God's plan and that it's how we become uh, part of his family, that there is no salvation without it. And so as advocates of adoption, wherever we go through the Radiance Foundation, we encourage people to pray on it. You know, just don't jump into it. Pray and, and, and ask God as if he's moving your heart toward adoption. One of the things I think it requires is some selflessness. Have we in our culture, do you think, become so um, needing what we want, what we think is significant, that we're unwilling to be sacrificial at all in the way that we live? Yeah, that's the, the true sign of a, of a strong society is the way that we're willing to give up something of ourselves. Self-sacrifice makes us a better culture, makes us a better society. Sure. And adult, adoption is a beautiful act of love and self-sacrifice. But we're living in an increasingly narcissistic society that's all about me and, and forgetting that Christ is always calling for us to take care of the least of these. Your book is called Not Equal, Civil Rights Gone Wrong. What do you mean by that? an industry that's been hijacked by, you know, for instance, the, the abortion industry, by Planned Parenthood, that is seeing humanity in a whole different light instead of seeing us as precious and as irreplaceable. Um, it, it's, it's an industry that's been taken over by those who see individuals and human beings as almost as commodities, mm -hmm. as, as a revenue generator. And yeah. so, you know, we talk about so many different issues in here. We talk about fatherlessness, we talk about poverty, talk about, of course, the abortion industry, adoption, and even groups like the NAACP, yeah. who I would have thought would have been on our side. You know, when you talk about racism, you can't help but talk about the systemic racism of the abortion industry. And so when I talk about being not equal, <laughs> Yeah. Someone with a story like mine that would be easily written off, considered less than equal because of the circumstances of my conception. Mm -hmm. But those circumstances don't change the condition of my worth. And they didn't surprise God a bit. <laughs> 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 I want to mention Ryan's book is called Not Equal, Civil Rights Gone Wrong. You know, it does address so many of the cultural issues we all face today. We need to read books like this, think about it, and then stand on God's side on these issues. You can get a copy by visiting CBN.com.